Hey everybody, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be dipping my toe into the world of model railways. I have worked with some model railway products before, but I've never been brave enough to try anything in N-Gage. N-Gage is scaled 2mm to the foot. That's about 1 to 148. So this in itself is going to pose a bit of a challenge. So this piece could turn out to be a complete disaster, but at the very least, I might be able to learn a thing or two along the way. So just like most of my pieces, I decided to use a photo frame for the base. After hot gluing in place some cheap packing foam, I then used a denser piece of XPS foam to put on top. This is going to be the layer that the track sits on, so it's going to have that little bit more stability. So after using a few cocktail sticks to hold the track and the tunnel portal in place, I could then get a better idea of how I wanted my terrain to look. I decided to go with the idea that this line is going to be set in quite a large hillside. So I measured and cut another large piece of expanded polystyrene and fixed it to the back. This is going to give us a good amount of space to work with behind the line to try and create some nice scenic interest. At this point everything was looking quite square, so using the hot wire foam cutter I removed some material to create some natural landforms. I just removed a small amount at a time and carried on until I had a look that I was happy with. For the track bed I used a piece of cork sheet which I measured and cut to size before hot gluing in place on the diorama. This is going to give the track a little bit more height and create a nice shoulder when it comes to ballasting. Then I smoothed out the edge of the cork using a sanding attachment on the Dremel. The track was then held in place using some gel superglue. Then it was time to give the track a more weathered look. So I started with some grey surface primer from Vallejo and gave the track a nice even coat. Then I gave the track a base coat of a mix of cement and mahogany from Vallejo. Once the base coat had fully dried, I dry brushed on some Iraqi sand and gave all the sleepers a highlight. I followed this up with a dark grey enamel wash from AK Interactive. This may seem like quite a lot of effort, but when you compare it to an unpainted piece of track, I think it shows it's definitely worth doing. So with the track painting finished, I could then move on to filling out the rest of the area behind the tunnel portal. I just used a few off cuts of the polystyrene and hot glued them into place. So with the basic landforms now in place, I could then start to create a fascia. For those of you who have watched any of my other videos, you're probably quite aware by now that I like to create my borders using some polypropylene sheet. I like to use it because it's cheap, it cuts really easily, it takes paint really well and it can be stuck down with double sided tape so it saves you reams of time. simply marked out and cut all four pieces to follow the contours of the landscape. Then I added some black gesso to the piece that would be visible from the inside of the tunnel portal. And with the fascia finished and all neatly in place, I could then concentrate on applying the ballast to the track. 
I needed to do this step now because I wouldn't be accessible once the tunnel portal was fitted. I went for a mixed blend ballast from Jarvis that scaled to N-gauge. This diorama isn't going to be based on anywhere in particular, so I thought the mixed blend would work quite well. Working in small sections, I applied the ballast over the top and used a soft brush to push it between all the sleepers. Then I tapped the top of the rails with a handle of an old paintbrush to remove any loose pieces of ballast that were sitting on top of the sleepers. And using the soft brush I pushed all the ballast into the gaps down each side to create the shoulder. This was all then locked into place by pre-wetting the area with some isopropyl alcohol and then applying a good amount of scenic glue. And while all the ballast was drying, I set to work on preparing and painting the tunnel portals. This is an N-gauge tunnel portal from Pico. I started by priming each piece with some black surface primer from Vallejo. Because these pieces are quite small and it's going to be difficult to get lots of detail in there, I decided the best way to paint these would be to dry brush them. So for the first layer, I mixed a really dark grey using some acrylic buff paint and some black gesso. Then I gave both pieces a really heavy dry brush with a makeup brush. Then I gradually lightened up the grey with more buff and carried on with another layer. I repeated this step about five times, applying a little less paint each time. Then once I'd built up enough layers of grey tones, I then finished off with a very small amount of aged white, before moving on to wet blending. I used a tiny amount of burnt umber acrylic paint on a select few bricks, only applying it to a section of the brick, not covering the whole thing. Then using a small amount of water, I could then blend the tone across the face of the brick. This step acts more like a tint rather than a wash, and it's going to be quite subtle, but it's going to give us a nice colour variation across the face of the portal. I concentrated on applying this effect mainly to the top and around the bottom section of the tunnel portal. This is going to give the impression that maybe some dirt is built up in these areas over time. Then I used an old airbrush needle to flick on some aged white paint to look like lichen. Then using a few green and yellow tones, I created a mossy effect using the same wet blend technique. This may look a little harsh now, but once it's dried, it will give us a nice subtle effect. Then I applied some black pigment powder to create a soot effect from all the smoke and turned my attention to the tunnel lining. To keep things simple, I decided to use this cardboard tube for the inside of the tunnel. I just cut it into the shape that I needed and painted the inside with some black gesso. Then using the airbrush, I dusted over some flat earth along the bottom pieces. This is going to subtly look like some dirt that's been built up on the inside of the tunnel over time. Then I used a small amount of hot glue to hold the tube into place and the tunnel portal and retaining wall was ready to fit to the diorama. Then it was time to build up the rest of the landforms using some sculptor mould. As usual I mixed this up in small batches and applied it to the piece a section at a time.
then I smoothed that out using some water on the end of my finger. I just repeated these steps until the entire piece was covered in sculptor mould. Then I gave the areas on the embankments a little more texture using an old stiff brush and to fill the gap next to the tunnel portal I used a rock plaster casting. Then I gave everything 24 hours to completely dry before moving on to painting. The plaster rock casting was the first thing that needed to be painted. I decided to use the classic leopard spot technique for this so I watered down a few brown tones to create some washes. Starting with the yellow ochre I covered about a third of the casting with the wash. Then moving on to the flat earth wash I covered another third of the casting. Then I gave the whole rock an overall wash with a dark grey. Then while the rock casting was drying, I watered down some raw sienna acrylic paint and covered all of the sculptor mould. This layer is just to stop any of the white sculptor mould showing through if we happen to miss anything when we apply the dirt texture. Then once everything had dried, I could then add a little more detail to the rock work by dry brushing on some aged white. Then I finished off the rocks by highlighting just the edges with some white acrylic. To keep all of the dirt texture in place when applying it to the embankments, I used some of AK's Dark Earth Acrylic Paste. I simply applied it to the areas that the dirt was going to struggle to stick to. And the reason I'm using this paste is because it's a nice dark colour, so again, if I happen to miss anything, this is going to act like the dirt. So once I had enough of the paste in place, I sprinkled over some of my tile grout and dried earth mix. Then using a soft brush, I pushed all of the earth over the top of the mix to build up the embankment. Then I repeated this step on the line side embankment and any other hard to reach areas. Then using some watered down matte mod podge I applied my dirt mixture to the rest of the diorama. Then I brushed off any excess dirt from the rock face and locked everything into place with some isopropyl alcohol and some scenic glue. So I set the piece to one side so I could start to work on the vegetation and the first thing on the list was trees. Building trees from scratch is one of my favourite things to do and one of my favourite materials to use is dried thyme twigs. They have a really good complex structure to them so they're ideal for making small armatures. I start by trimming away any excess twigs until I'm left with a branch structure I'm happy with. I do this a few times until I have a bunch of pieces that I can then super glue together to form my armature. Then I selected a few pieces of sea foam to start to create the canopies on the trees. After trimming away any excess that isn't needed, I used a small amount of super glue and some activator to glue them to the armature and start to build up my canopy.
Once I'm happy with the overall look, I give the canopy and the tops of the branches a coat of white primer. Then I use some burnt umber acrylic ink through the airbrush to tint all of the white primer. This gives the tree a little bit of a highlight with the higher points being lighter and the lower points being a little bit darker. Then using some mid-green foam scatter from Geek Gaming, I could then start to apply my foliage. I sprayed the canopy with some matte varnish trying my best not to get any on the trunk and then dipped the tree into the foliage mix. Then I sprinkled some over the areas that were missed. Then using some light green leaves from Nock, I gave the tops of the canopies a highlight. Then in no time at all, I had a tree that was ready to fit to the piece. But let's face it, this is going to look a little bit odd with just one tree, so I made a few more. So with all the trees made it was then time to start working on the ground details. I removed all the trees to give me a little bit more space to work with so I could apply my earth scatter from Geek Gaming. This layer is primarily going to sit under the static grass so I used a little bit of watered down matte mod podge and applied it in sections to the base. I tried to avoid applying this near the base of the trees just so I had a bit more of a natural look. So once that had all dried I could then turn my attention to applying the static grass. For the first layer I used a mix of 2mm Autumn from WWS and some 4mm Spring from Geek Gaming. I applied another layer of watered down matte mob podge before sprinkling over the static grass applicator and watching the magic happen. Then I turned the piece upside down to tap away any excess. Then I used a small brush to push any of the grass on the embankment so it was facing in the right direction. I repeated these steps a section at a time and also used the vacuum to remove the bulk of the excess. Also don't forget to collect your excess grass because you can always use this on future projects. So now the first layer of grass was in place, the next thing to do was to try and give it a bit of a highlight. So I applied a small amount of glue to the centre of each tuft and then applied some 2mm light moss green static grass. This layer isn't really that necessary, but I like to do it because I think it just adds that little bit more realism.
Then for the final step, I very sparingly applied some 6mm summer green towards the back of the tufts. These longer pieces of grass can then be used to try and create some small plants that are grown in the middle of the tufts. I applied some more matte mod podge just to the very tips of these pieces of grass and then applied some dark green leaves from Knock. And then for that extra bit of detail, I super glued down some smaller pieces of thyme twig to act as fallen branches. Then I crushed up and scattered over some fine natural roots. This is just going to add to the woodland floor effect. This was all then glued into place. I also picked up this N-gauge line side fence kit from Pico. I'm going to be using it to separate the line from the pathway that we left at the front of the diorama. But before it could be fitted into place, it needed some paint. So after removing all the pieces from the sprue, I could set to work building the fence. Although this kit is quite small, it's still quite easy to put together. All the pieces push fit together, so unless you're going to be moving it around all the time, you don't really need to use any glue. So once I had the kit put together, I could then move on to paint. I started by giving it a coat of grey primer. Then I gave the fence a base coat of Vallejo's wood. And once the base coat had dried, I gave the whole fence a heavy dry brush with some Iraqi sand. Then I applied a mid-brown wash from the Army Painter, mainly to the fence posts. Then I tied all of this together with a tint of burnt umber acrylic ink through the airbrush. I then fit the fence into place using a pick to create a few holes and just pushed it into place. Then to add some final details, I used some fine leaf foliage from Woodland Scenics to create some bushes. I also used some other bush material from Diorama Presepe, just to add some variation. I used a little bit of matte mod podge just to hold them in place. Once I was happy with the look of all the plants and bushes, I could then permanently fit the trees. Then I applied some light sienna pigment powder from Vallejo to the path at the front of the piece. This is just going to highlight the centre of the path so it looks like it's been trodden a lot over time.
Then all that was left to do was paint all four sides with some black gesso paint. And because the sun doesn't come out very often here in the UK, I thought I'd take the diorama for a little walk. 